All right, we are back with example three. So in, in example three, what we're gonna do is we're gonna solve an equation in geometry. So we're gonna use our geometry skills equipped with our algebraic skills to um, figure out what x is, okay? So we need to determine what x is um, and write a justification for each step. So when you see this picture, this picture should be something you remember from the past. This is from chapter one, okay? And whenever you see something like this, you should remember there should be something that just kind of like pops into your brain. Um, so, uh, do you remember when you have a piece, a piece and a hole, what this is? If you're thinking about the addition, um, the segment addition postulate, you would be correct. So we're gonna use that to solve um, to write an equation so that we can um, solve for x. Now, before we do that, we have to write down all of the given information. So I'm gonna make a zero here, and um, I'm just gonna write down all the given information. So the first thing is, is nm is equal to 2x. And whenever you're using the equal sign, you don't put a line over the top. The line over the top for the line segment is only when you're using the congruent symbol so if I had a congruent symbol like this, um, I would say n m is congruent to something that's not a number, okay? It wouldn't be a number there. But if I'm having it equal to an actual number, or like 2x, 2x is represented in a number, then you use the equal sign and you don't put a line and segment across on top. So, okay, so that's n m is equal to 2x. Then we're gonna have MO is equal to 3X minus nine, and then NO is equal to 4X minus four. So that is all of our given information. Now that we have all of our given information written down, then we can use that segment addition postulate, but when you're doing proofs, you have to write it in um, using the symbols, and that's why I was so hard on you guys for your quizzes and steps, because it has to be in symbols in, the, uh, in these proofs. So we would write NM plus MO equals NO. Okay, this piece plus that piece equals the whole. And that is the segment addition postulate. Okay, and you have to write it just like this. Okay, so there's sometimes people would try to do some kind of variation. This is the segment addition postulate. You need to write it exactly like this, okay? Now from here, we're gonna substitute these values, these given values into this formula. So instead of writing in M, we're gonna write 2X plus MO is 3X minus nine equals NO, which is 4X minus four. And that is just the substitution property, oh, property of equality. Okay, from here, we need to simplify this side of the equation first. We need to combine like terms. So we're just gonna do that, 2x plus 3x is 5x. So we have 5x minus nine equals 4x minus four, and that's just called simplify. We simplified the equation. Um, now we have x's on both sides. Uh, so I'm gonna move the smaller one, and to do that I have to do the inverse of um, a positive number, which would be uh, we need to subtract by 4x to both sides. So that's going to be the subtraction property of equality. Okay. Um, that's going to cancel 5x minus 4x. We're just going to be left with x minus 9 equals negative 4. So we simplified there. And then we're going to add nine to both sides. That cancels, we're left with x equals, what's that, five? Oh wait, this is addition property of equality. I forgot to write it. Addition property of equality, and then we have our answer, which was simplify. Um, don't get hung up on these numbers if they're 
more if you have to use more or less or whatever just um, so don't there's eight there and it's blank and that's okay okay so that is a proof that's a geometric proof okay we wrote all the given information we looked at this we knew from our previous experience that this is a segment addition postulate so we wrote it using the variables and the symbols then we just substituted in those given values, used our great algebra skills that we have, and boom, shakalaka, there you have the answer. So we're gonna go ahead and do the next thing for this next problem. Okay, so again, we have a picture. Um, we're gonna try to determine what X is. So we have a piece here, we have a piece here, and then measure of ABC, which is the whole, is equal to eight X. So this is using our previous knowledge again, um, so what would our equation be when we have a piece of an angle, a piece of an angle, and we have the whole angle? Yes, this would be the angle addition postulate. So we're going to use that to create our equation that we're going to use to figure out what x is. But before we do that, we have to write down our given information. So I'm going to use 0 and um, write all the given information down. So the first one we have here is the measure of angle ABC is equal to 8x, that's the whole angle ABC, comma. Um, whatever you're doing equals, you're gonna have measure of angle, okay? If you're doing a congruence, um, then you would just have over here, you'd have the angle of ABC is congruent to something else that's not a number, okay? So, that's how that would look. But whenever there's an equal sign, you're going to put that measure of angle ABC is equal to 8X. Okay, so now let's do this one. The measure of angle ABD. The measure of angle ABD is equal to 3X plus 5. And then the measure of angle, um, well, let's go CBD. C, B, D is equal to 6X minus 16, and all of this is because it's given. That's the given information. Now, once we have all the given information written down, we can use that angle addition postulate. So let's go ahead and say that um, the measure of angle A, B, D plus the measure of angle CBD is equal to the measure of angle ABC. And that is the angle addition postulate. Okay? Now from here, we're gonna substitute all this information in to our equation. So the measure of angle ABD, ABD is three X plus five. So we're gonna substitute that in three X plus five plus the measure of angle CBD, CBD is six X minus 16. We substitute that in and the measure of angle ABC is equal to eight X. So that's the substitution property of equality. All right, uh, from here, we just need to simplify this side of the equation. We have to combine like terms. So we have three X and a six X, that's gonna be nine X. And then we have five minus 16, which is gonna be a negative 11 equals eight X. Um, And then, what's this? That was, what did we do? We just simplified. So I'm just thinking, simplify. I'm thinking whether I want to move the 8x over here, the 9x over here. So what my thought is, is that the 8x is smaller, so I always like to do that, right? Um, however, the... Uh, the X is over here. So once I move the X over here, which is nice is I, I need to write my answer with the X over here on this side. Um, but if I move this one over here, the X is over here by itself, which is great. However, 
um, at the end of it, I'm going to have to use that symmetric property of equality and move it back. And why I would move this x over here is I always move the smaller one, right? But the only reason why I'd move it over here is because this x is already kind of over here by itself. And when I move this x over here, then I'd have to get rid of the 11 and, you know. So, um, anyways, I think I'm just going to move the 9x over here. This x is already on the side of the equation and it's isolated. So, it's going to give me a couple extra things that I have to do at the end. But I think that's okay because... Um, why is it okay, Joy? That is okay because it's good to practice. Okay. Um, I probably should have wrote this right here. I'm going to write this right here. So I'm going to subtract 9x to both sides. That is the subtraction property of equality. That cancels. I'm left with negative 11 equals 8x minus 9x, which would be a negative x. So that's just simplifying. Um, and then I need to get rid of this negative. So I'm going to rewrite it. And then I'm going to multiply this side by a negative 1 to both sides. And that would be the multiplication property of equality. Okay, that's going to leave me with a positive 11 equals x and that simplify. And then I need to have this x on the other side. So this is kind of what I was talking about. But it's okay. So I'm just going to rewrite it. X equals 11. The X needs to be on the left side. And I can do that because of the wonderful, magnificent, symmetric property of equality. So there you go. That's it. So we um, saw this. We knew that this was an angle addition postulate. We wrote down all our given information. Then we wrote that angle addition postulate in symbols. Super important. Then we substitute the values in. Simplified. Used our great... Um, algebra skills that we have. We justified everything and then we use that symmetric property of equality at the end just to make sure that that x was written on the left side. So that's it. Um, we will be back in a little bit for example four.